Good afternoon, Mesa Moonrise. Uh, buenas tardes. Uh, today I'm feeling some, some kind of way. Uh, I'm actually going to talk about something that not a lot of people talk about, or at least I haven't seen anyone talk about it yet, but uh, breastfeeding and menstruation. Uh, I started my period yesterday and actually came a little bit early and I really wasn't expecting it for like 10 more days but you know sometimes that happens but um it's uh and yeah she's doing her twiddling that is what uh breastfeeding babies do they like to tweak and twiddle your nipples. And <laughs> look at that. As you can imagine, it can drive you crazy. Um, but, I mean, what are you going to do? I often will get my necklace and let her pull on that. I usually have my longer one on, but I'm wearing the amber because she's still teething. Her molars have been coming in, so um, it is like the best thing. You know, I'm just being proactive. So I've been wearing my amber. She always wears her amber. But uh, uh I didn't get my period back. Um, after birth until about she was about six months old so that was cool um, if you don't breastfeed your periods typically don't come back um, I mean your periods come back like right away so um, if you're exclusively breastfeeding it's going to be probably somewhere around the time your child starts eating um, solid foods. Because um, the demand isn't there as strongly as if, you know, she's just uh, getting her food strictly from uh, my breasts. So, um... Another positive with breastfeeding and menstruation is um, your periods are only going to last a couple days and they're not going to be that heavy. My heaviest, my heaviest day is usually like the first day. So today I'm just tired and <sighs> crampy. And my nipples feel really sensitive. And there she is, going for the reach. She's going for the reach. Um, <sighs> trying to think of what else to say here. Um, I will say that a few days before your period comes on um i think something happens where your milk the flavor changes because of the hormones uh you know because your bot because you're, you're getting ready to menstruate so um, it definitely will seem like your baby's wanting to be on your breasts um, a lot. And they also may act a little bit fussy, just like if they're in pain, like they're teething. Um, I feel like I think the milk changes flavor, but I also think possibly that 
you get a little bit of a dip in your supply. Um, but also at the same time, your breasts get full feeling, but it's like more like tenderness from menstruation, you know? Um, so she'll do like a lot of switching back and forth. And that is basically to keep your milk supply up. Um, the babies, they know what they're doing. They really do. They know what they're doing. Huh. Huh. They know what they're doing, huh, Rhea? Huh. They know what they're doing. Uh so, I don't know why either, but whenever I, like, uh, get ready to start, um, all of my emotions and senses feel like they are heightened, and a lot of things seem like they get on my nerves, like I feel like I want to clean a bunch it's almost like, it's almost like a nesting, but things just feel like they get on my nerves easier. Um, so, uh, just, uh, you just gotta ride with it, you know? It's hard, it's tough, but you gotta just ride through it. And there she is doing the twiddling. Uh. Oh. Tylenol if your cramps get really out of hand. Uh, chamomile tea is excellent for just helping keep you calm. Holy basil tea helping keep you calm. Um. Mm. Actually, lavender might be a little bit better than chamomile because for some people who are sensitive, chamomile can make you cramp. But uh, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily like, you know, uh, bad. It's just more like uterus uh, helping your body pass it would help your body pass any, like, clots, you know? Um, also, your stomach can tend to be more sensitive, so chamomile really does do well with that. Lavender, say, lavender's really good. Um, the main thing about lavender is it really will make you sleepy, super sleepy. Um... Just, like, be intuitive, you know? Oh, definitely. More tired. Get more tired. So, if the husbands are watching this, wondering what they can do to help their breastfeeding, girlfriend, wife, partner, whatever, um, just be supportive. Be understanding of their moods. Uh, because it can really make you feel touched out between the twiddling, the cramping, the tiredness, and just feeling like aggravated. Ah, uh, but push through it. And I'm here to show you that, you know, that's how they do it. You know, it's normal. A lot of back and forth, a lot of twiddling. Uh, but, uh, oh, another thing I might say is, um, you want back? You want back? There you go. Uh, a lot of people wonder, well, if you're breastfeeding, can you still get pregnant? Yes, you can. As long as you're ovulating. 
you're having periods, you can get pregnant. So, uh, but I, I pretty much get periods pretty regularly. Um, they usually fall around the full moon and the new moon. And they usually last anywhere between one, mm, I'd say one to three days. The first day is the heaviest. By the third day, it's really uh, winding down. And then it's just, just residual, like, spotting for maybe a day or two. So, like, five days maximum. And uh, it definitely... You know, the chamomile tea works great for me. And uh, chocolate, I love to eat chocolate. <laughs> it is, I don't know what it is, but chocolate is just like, chocolate and peanut butter when I'm menstruating, oh, so good. But, um, oh, definitely um, boost your uh, milk uh, making foods like oatmeal, apricots, those are two really good ones. So eating some oatmeal in the morning with some apricots in there will help you. The apricots also, I like to eat them on a daily basis anyways because postpartum constipation is a real thing and it can happen for a long time. So, um, making sure you get good fiber. Um, but, gosh, if I think of anything else to add to this, but uh, I hope all you ladies enjoyed my video, and peace, and happy breastfeeding.